Hello everyone, Lily here. Thank you for joining me. Um, this is my little channel where I like to share all the things I've made, a little, about the, little bit about the things I've been up to as well. Um, I try and keep it happy and positive and jolly and as much as I can. Normally it, I'm, I'm happy but I'm a bit of a worrier so sometimes I might be overly worried about things but I do try and be try and come across as being happy because it is generally I am a happy person. Um, what I've got to show you this week, I've got a animal, a little horse, and I've been working on a little bit of sewing and I've got a, some, a couple of beach combing items and I think, oh, well, I've got a magazine, which I don't know where it is, but I'll find that in a moment to show you as well. Like, it's not vintage, 80s, is 80s class as vintage, but it's a family circle one, an Australian family circle. So, and I picked that up because I like, there's a lot of cooking recipes in it, but there's all sorts of things in it. So I thought I'd have a little bit of a look at that and share that with you as well. So I thought you'd enjoy that, hopefully. Um, I've been, yesterday I went, my car's got squeaky great brakes and it's got the MOT in a couple of weeks anyway. Um, so I haven't sent it to be fixed because it's, it can just be fixed in a couple of weeks. I've been trying not to use it. So I met my friend yesterday and got the bus. And I haven't really got the bus for years and years. So that was quite fun. Um, I felt a, a cross between a teenager again and an old person, kind of a pensioner on the bus. So I, but I did enjoy it. It was fun. And it was quite quick. It wasn't, it was sort of, I got a bit more exercise. So I walked to the bus stop and back. So that was fine. And I met a school friend who I've known since we, we lived near each other when we were really young. So I've known her since I was about five years old. So we meet up every, um, every few months. Uh, so we had a scone and a cup of coffee and that was lovely and then we did a little bit of shopping we hid from a woman <laughs> hid from a woman in a shop at the till because we had been looking at um you know when you bake a cake and you have tin a tin a cake tin you can put in a paper a paper thing that's already in the shape of the tin rather than putting your own greaseproof paper in i don't know what they're called tin base or something cake 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 like a, like a cupcake case, but a massive one to go in a big tin. So we were looking at those and I was saying that I use them. And she said, oh, that's a good idea. I wouldn't mind getting some. And I said, yeah, they're good. They're worth it. You should get some. Then another lady came up and she was saying, oh, they're wonderful. We didn't know where she was just an extra friendly lady. And she was saying how great they were. But in the end, we, my friend didn't buy one because they didn't have the right size she wanted. But then we were then going to the queue and my friend said, I feel really bad because she, the woman who was talking to us about them was in the queue. And um, basically, we didn't want to offend her by going to the till and we hadn't bought the cake cases because then she might think that her advice wasn't very good or she might be offended. So we were so worried this woman was going to sit at the till without a cake case that we had to hover around suspiciously <laughs> around the shop until she's paid for her, until she paid for her items. And then we could happily pay for our items, which were things that didn't include the cake cases. So I don't know. That's totally. But we, me and my friend are just exactly the same. <laughs> As soon as she said about it, I'm like, yeah, I don't, I agree. We don't want to upset. This poor woman was trying to help us and we uh, we didn't take her advice. What would she think? She'll think her advice wasn't very good. So yeah, we totally overly thought, overthought that. Um, I don't know if that's the sort of thing other people do or whether that's just just us. Um, so yeah, it's lovely to have a catch up with her. I've known her for years. It's just like you kind of have that bond with someone, don't you, that you've known for a long time. So that was really lovely. Um, have I done anything else? I've got a new phone, which is the one I'm filming on now. I'm hoping I look better on it. I'm not sure. <laughs> I probably just look the same. But one thing I do know is I've gone from 32 gigabytes, which I now know a lot about, from 32 gigabytes, which was full up to about 31.9 um, with my storage usage. And I've now got 256. So in theory, I can make super long videos. I can talk for an hour now. I can, you know, you don't want me to probably. <laughs> I don't think I, I don't know if I could not talk for an hour. Um, but I can basically make videos and upload them without getting really annoyed, basically, and getting in a mood with myself because uh, it won't upload and I've got to delete lots of other things. So I'm not going to go on about that anymore. So cut, cut, don't, don't mention it again. But anyway, new phone. Hopefully it's all recording and the light's okay and everything's okay. Touch wood. Um, and actually, although I don't like buying techie things, it's been quite exciting setting it up, which is why I'm recording it now, because I couldn't wait to try it out and <laughs> see how much quicker it was uploading and everything. And I don't, I do a bit of editing, but not loads, just cutting out anything. Sometimes 
sometimes I end up repeating myself because I start it a few times, sometimes to get into it a bit, I'm a bit, oh, and I think, oh no, and then, so I'll end up saying the same thing and then you forget, because last time I forgot, bear with me two seconds. I don't think, oh, sat on my hot water bottle. I don't think I told you that I found, I picked a name for the little emotional support crochet elephant friend for the big elephant. What I did was I chose a name and I had them all written down a card and I went like that. I closed my eyes and put things, but because I've recorded the video so many times, I don't think that bit was actually in the video. However, the name that I chose with my finger, closing my eyes, was Bubbles, which I think really suits her. So whoever chose Bubbles as a name for the large emotional support elephant, the little emotional support elephant is called Bubbles, which I actually love that name. I think it's really cute. So I haven't got my animal friends behind me because I've been, because I've just, quickly recording this after work. Is it there? After work, I am, um, I haven't got, normally I have a little bit background of kind of animals and things, but I haven't got that today. They're not there all the time. I like to just change them when I record. Uh, we have, I have got a lot of animals around the house kind of in strategic places, but they're not normally there. Um, right, let's get on with it then. So seven minutes, see, look, seven minutes of waffle already. And I haven't even shown you anything interesting. I have finished. This was a challenge. I, my niece asked me, or my sister asked me on behalf of my niece, who's 15, if I could make a anti-anxiety horse. And I know people have been talking about the emotional chicken. They don't know about that because they're not really crafty. So this is a, they just thought of it themselves. Um, an anti-anxiety horse, and she loves Dougal from Father Ted, and she wanted it to look like Dougal from, it's already called Dougal, and if it could have a similarity to Dougal from Father Ted, that would be helpful. She would like that. Um, so that was hard. But I've made the horse with the Studio Seren large unicorn pattern, made it into a horse. Um, it's really, she's, he, Dougal, is very skinny and the arms and legs turning them inside out was really challenging because my printer didn't have a like a 70% smaller pattern thing. I had to do it at A5, which I think is possibly, is that half of A4? I don't know. It's probably, it looks about half the size of the other animals anyway. Because I use linen, linen is very frayable, fray friendly, it loves fraying. So anyway, here is the little, I've given long hair, but I think I'm gonna give it to my niece when I give it to my niece she can trim the hair hair it's a mane she can trim the mane when she wants to so um and i'm not sure about the eyes i think i might i've got a piece of cotton here because i'm, cause I'm gonna add different eyes on i'm not really sure so there she is he dougal i've not used to making boy things look all that mane <laughs> got a long mane tail the tail turned out nicely these patches are to cover up the bits that frayed so there was a lot of fraying going on as I said, so that was a bit of a shame, but I think it looks quite nice. I don't think it looks much like Dougal, really, but it may look like Dougal because I've got some toft wool, the same colour as Dougal's jumper. If you don't know who Dougal from Father Ted is and what earth I'm talking about, but you won't know how little it looks like him either, I guess. So I'm either going to crochet him a big chunky scarf or a jumper, but I don't think I'm going, I think I'm going to keep the legs free because she wants one item of removable, quite fussy, isn't she, my niece? She wants one item of removable clothing, easily removable clothing, and needs to be able to fit into her bag. Um, so I think, yeah, scarf, I don't have a pattern for a small, it'll be a straight jump, the jumper will be very basic. Uh, but I think it's the right colour for his jumper that he used to wear like a tank top thing. So, um, yeah, it was a challenge, the skinny leg. When I first started it, the head and the body, I thought, oh, I love making this. This is little mini versions. I'm gonna make all the animals mini. This is amazing. Then I started doing the legs and the arms and I couldn't, it was just so hard to get them the right way round without poking something through the end or yeah, it just fraying or it was really difficult. Because I'd use the same seam allowance. So I guess that made them even skinnier same seam allowance as I was if I was making a large one. If I'd made a smaller seam allowance, I think it would have frayed even more because it'd have been less space. And I pink and shear with the scissors, zigzaggy scissors, um, the edges. So it shouldn't fray, but it's linen, so it does, unfortunately. And I did crochet a little. I didn't crochet it, no. I stitched it 
with the heart there with a little piece of felt which is a nice i just made up the heart shape but it turned out quite nice normally i try and do a heart and it it ends up a weird shape so yes not sure about the eyes the mane needs a trim doesn't really look like dougal but in its own way i think it's a cute <laughs> in its own right i think it's a cute horse really i think it's hard to make a horse a toy horse but it stays there looks a bit like a does it look a bit like a, a dragon there I don't know. <laughs> Stay. I've got to lift this box up in a minute anyway, because I've got something to show you in it. Um, oh, go okay, behind. There. So, yeah, next thing will be to make the jumper. I'm seeing my sister on, when am I seeing her? 10th of April, I think, for coffee. So, the jumper will be finished by then. What else have I been doing? I decided to do a bit more slow stitching because I've had some Liberty offcuts, not lots, but little bits and pieces from the bags I've been making. I thought I would make some more. Oh, this one was half finished. So I'll finish this one. These are petal shapes and then a hexagon in the middle. What I haven't tried to do yet is stitch that onto something. And because these are curved, I think it might be a little bit I don't know whether it's going to be neat or not. So I'm going to try. I've got, I've ordered some more fabric and some more linen and I'm going to stitch it onto some bags, these onto bags. I've made two, but like I said, I've got to see how neat they come out and I'll put a little sea glass in the middle. So I like doing that. So yeah, they're Liberty print. The middle isn't, the outside is Liberty print. And I've got, I'm sure you remember this fabric because I've made it for quite a few things now. So I haven't finished. It's got some flappy ones there. Um, I have made a bit of a mess of yellow cotton going on. Um, and I fussy cut all the little flowers so they all look neat with my, when I went in my, this is my box with all my slow stitching things in. And I'd forgotten actually, which is naughty because I paid for them, but I'd forgotten that I'd bought all these lovely plasticky cut, cutty outy things. So I've got this I've got these shapes, where did I get this from? Sew and Quilt Hexagon Petal. So I've got this plastic hexagon petal, which I can then put on the fabric. I mean, this isn't a very good example because it's not, it hasn't got anything to fussy cut out particularly, but then you can put it on there, draw around so you can see. So if you've got fabric with something and you want to get it completely in the centre, and they're really, really good. So I've remembered I've got those, had loads of fun making those, and I've got some of the grey left which I literally just finished a bag on and this is all I've got left <laughs> from this but I think it's enough to make a hexagon one two three four five six one two three yeah so there's enough to I can fussy cut those flowers I mean it's a thin strip so I can't be that fussy with them but there's enough to kind of play with anyway and make another one and do you know what? Although I've been trying to slow stitch and I have slow stitched, I like this a lot better because with slow stitching, you're not, you're kind of not, it's not about the end product, but I like, I like things to look nice. Part of the fun and enjoyment and the mindfulness part of it for me is that it looks nice and I can't get that bit out of me. So I'm not saying slow stitching doesn't look nice, but I suppose. That's not what it's supposed to be about. So I think I've been enjoying it. Basically, I've been enjoying doing these more than I have the actual slow stitching stuff. So somehow I think I kind of need a cross between the two. So I'm not so regimented because this will probably be made into something. Um, but to have a cross between using pretty fabrics that I like, making it neat, but still being a bit mindfully as I'm mindfully mindful as I'm doing it I think I know what I mean I hope you know what I mean I've also got these little I've I've seen these before it was a while ago I bought them and all the little hexagon shapes as well and I've got the petal ones and I've got another one that I finished there which was I think they're called I keep forgetting I can't remember what they're called I'll pop it up I can't remember they're not called they're not diamonds it's annoying me now, but I can't, I can't think. No, I'll pop it up because I'll look it up afterwards and find it. 
I've got my little just on my phone. I've got my little my daughter bought me this for Christmas. A little uh, needle minder which sticks but it didn't work yesterday because I wasn't using it actually and I dropped a needle on the dining room floor and I heard it bounce and I could not find it. I was sweeping and looking and and the other day <laughs> so it's still there somewhere. The other day my pin cushion which I can't get because my phone is on it but it's a, a little heart puffy pin cushion thing um, so it's got all the pins and a needle sticking out. I'd taken that upstairs because I sometimes craft, if we go upstairs and watch television, this probably sounds weird, if we go upstairs and watch television in bed, I take my little cutting board and I do a little bit of um, crafting in bed while we're watching television. Um, and I dropped the, I didn't realise, but I dropped the pins on the floor, the whole pin cushion upside down. So then I stood on it and the bottoms of all the pins went in the bottom of my foot. <laughs> And then I was like, that was a really stupid thing to do. But I kind of leapt off it quick enough for not to do any actual damage, luckily. Um, but yeah, I didn't learn my lesson because I dropped a needle yesterday. Um, what was I talking about? I don't know. This bag. There's all my Liberty scraps in there, all bits of pieces. And what else have I got? I've got a little Kath Kidson, which I've had ages. And I can't remember what it came with. I think it came with one of the books. Uh, needles in there, don't drop them. <laughs> and I've got some bits of sea glass with drills, holes in holes in already to go in the middle. And another finished one which I've completely forgotten about in the bottom. Different pattern. So yes, I'm sure I was going to tell you something about all that, but I didn't, so I don't know, it'll probably come to me later. Yeah, so I like to use all my scraps, pretty scraps uh, of Liberty, which are nice. So I try not to waste anything. And I have been using for the bags, and I'm not going to go on about the bags, but thank you to everybody who has bought up one of my bags. I really appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And thank you for the lovely feedback. And um, I am going to be making some, some more soon. I have got some more fabric I've bought, which I will show you. Ooh. Because one of them is absolutely good. I try to choose different because sometimes um, fabrics, different kind of patterns. So I've got these two, and one I'm going to show you the polka dot because I've got that to go with it, and it does actually look nice. When you buy fabrics online, sometimes you don't know if they're going to go well together until they turn up and you can put them together. But these two, I haven't really seen this Liberty one before, but I love it. So I've got though it's really summery and bright and a little bit, a little bit seventies. So. It's those two and they go really well together and I also bought this one they're the newest ones and I think I think that's it I all made I got I ordered some because I've got a lot of linen and some lining fabric as well so I've just got two massive piles of linen which I make the bags with and my animals I've started to cut out the cool crafting sheep which I've mentioned previously, but that was a while ago, so you might not remember, which I'm going to, that's going to be my next proper animal. Um, proper animal, <laughs> as opposed to an unproper animal, uh, which is from, let me see if I can find the book. I don't know what I've done with it. Oh, here it is. Which is from the Cool Crafting book, and I'm going to make, I'm not going to use the felt, kind of the, dotty felt on the top I'm going to use fur I've got a little bits of fur so I'm going to use proper sheepy fabric instead hopefully that will work I'm not sure but I will try it that's kind of how I want it to look and I've just seen the 80s book so I will show you that let's get a bit more organized put those over there so I haven't got far with the sheep literally all I'm all I've done so far is start to cut half of the pattern out I photocopied it from the book and I've cut cut it out. So let's put the EPP away. I'm going to do some more of that tonight, I think. As I said, I've really been enjoying doing that. Oh, I've got beach combing as well to show you in a minute. I'll tell you about the beach combing, then I'll show you the book. I went beach combing and I found a massive, not massive, a normal sized brick. I mean, it's big compared to sea glass. And I was on my own because normally I'll just get Neil or can you carry that? We've, we've carried quite big things over from the big one. Once we found a, 
a big, not a surfboard, one of those boards that you, I don't know, it's a big, big board with, I think you normally put a kite thing on or something, or you put your feet in it anyway, I had to think for, the, for your feet. Uh, we found that, so we took that home. It wasn't anybody, we didn't steal it, it was literally washed up. Um, and he's carried a really big brick home, not brick, big rock thing home. Um, so anyway, I saw this brick and it had the three holes were smooth and it was perfect. And I thought, oh, that's silly, I can't carry that. I was about, I had an hour's walk home to the back of the car, or back to the car. So I thought, no. And then I saw another one because I was then thinking, oh, I wish I'd have taken it. And then I did see another one. So bear with me, I'm going to go and get it. <laughs> Running outside in the middle of a video. So look at this. Beachcombed item of the week. Ta-da! Do you think it was a thumbnail anybody will Anybody will watch that. Um, isn't it smooth and perfect? Not a square piece on it. So I'm going to, I just use it to decorate in the garden, to just to, not to decorate, paint, paint and decorate with. I just, we've got a wall outside, so I just tend to put them on the wall. Um, and now I'm going to have to run outside with it because I don't know what to do, <laughs> what to do with it. But it's quite impressive anyway, isn't it? Look how smooth it is, but it's really heavy. So I had it in my backpack as I was walking along. <laughs> Oh, that's really good exercise on the stones and the pebbles walking along carrying a massive brick. Right, like, I'm not going to take it outside again. That's okay, it just is wobbling around on the wall. I don't want to be sitting there. Another brick. I won't be making any more videos because the brick's fallen on my head, which I'd put too wobbly on the wall. Um, I found some more items, but I don't know what I did with them. But anyway, the brick was the main one because. Well, I think I earned the brick by like carrying it home and everything. I think I um, I feel I like it even more the fact that I kind of put maximum effort in carrying it all home because I could have, I could have left it there, but no, I thought I'd be, and I'm glad because I'm, I'm happy I've got it now. So anyway, that's enough about beachcomb bricks. I won't be making anything <laughs> that by the way. It's just gonna stay on the wall. Lastly, this is the book. This is food and craft. Which I didn't realise was best things to make, wonderful things to make for fates, fairs, bazaars, market stores and garage sales. 50 pence. Originally it was 2 99 And it's the fam Australian Family Circle, which I'm sure I remember. I think my mum used to get it and I used to read it. I do have a vague recollection of it. I think it's 80s. I think it would be in the 80s. I don't know if it's got a... Let me show you the cover. Cute little boy on the front with a massive apple. Uh, what are they called? Apple stick. Toffee apple, that's it, toffee apple. Uh, so we have, oh, this is, there's a lot of it. Oh, how has got the year here? Oh, 1990. It's not even that old, is it, 1990? Well, I guess it kind of is. But there's some interesting things in here anyway. So we have, um, a lot of it, as I said, a lot of it is to is to sell things at the at craft fairs, but it's just still got all the things to make and and the um, patterns and everything. A little cushion, very frilly. And oh, the cakes look gorgeous. They even look like old. I suppose you can get cakes like that now. They kind of look. I guess it's nineteen ninety. It's nearly eighties, isn't it? Look, they remind me of eighties cakes. Especially that one with all the hundreds and thousands of. But I was looking at the recipes and some of them were quite nice. I thought I would I would make them now. If I get a chance. We've got gingerbread man. And sweets. These are old fashioned sweets, coconut ice. My sister and I made my nanny make us coconut ice once. We wanted to make it. Don't know how hard it is to make, but we demand we demand us. <laughs> Can you make some coconut ice, Nanny? And because my nanny's just lovely, so yeah, groovy, of course you can. So we made that. I don't think people make that anymore, do they? And they've got jams and pies. Dried. Po Potpourri? Is it called potpourri? Do people still have potpourri? I remember having it in my first house. I don't know if people still do. Don't they look lovely? I'd like to go to a store when they're all there and buy them. 
Here's the sewing. We have a teddy bear cushion, which is a stencil. Don't know about people stenciling so much anymore. As I do, there's the patterns. And we have fabric covered pictures frames. Oh, they're very covered. And pin cushions. I need a safety pin cushion, don't I? After dropping it and standing on it the other day. I think that's the pin cushion there. Yeah. Hair slides with flowers on. And oh, these are classics. Coat hangers covered in fabric. Again, I don't know if that's something that people still have or whether that's an older thing that we don't do anymore. We have some <laughs> jolly teddy bear in a hat. I don't know why I've got a hat on. I quite, the mouse is okay. I always feel like I should make something out of these books, but I'll never do. Um... We have a toiletry bag and a shower cap. Can't see the show oh, there. And a toilet roll holdery kind of thing. So we've got the toilet roll holder there where you can hang your toilet roll in a lovely frilly item. And I like that jug. And uh, is that the hat? Yeah, it's a frilly hat. And a little bag, I think the other one is. Egg basket cover in the shape of a chicken. Uh, placemats. Oh, templates and gift stall treasures. What have we got here? We've got a hump, is it called a Humpty Dumpty? A Humpty Dumpty lady. There's the bears. We've got little booties, a wreath, bed socks, a tea cosy. I remember lots of people were going mad for making those a few years ago, tea cosies. Holder. No, it's not a tea cosy, it's just a tea cosy, isn't it? And then little booties and another. Oh, and knitted. Look at that, hang your clothes in style with a knitted coat hanger. That's impressive. And a matinee jacket. Not pretty. More booties, a close up of the dancing dumpty. It's not Humpty Dumpty, it's a dancing dumpty. I'm sure we had something, my sister and I, when we were little, that looked a bit like that. Don't know if it's handmade or not. Oh, look at this at the end. Oh, they're quite nice. We have a felt hot water bottle cover. That's quite nice. And dainty lace and ribboned balloon with fashionably dressed mice. And a few Christmassy items at the end, Christmas stockings, traditional looking Christmas stockings. And a skirt on and on, talcum filled ribbons, talcum powder in ribbons. Oh, you're making the talcum powder, you're putting it in a ribbon. Sounds a bit complicated. There we go. The best bit about that was the food, I think. The cakes, they were my favourite. It's making me hungry now. Put a lot of effort into the gingerbread people and the animals. Maximum, maximum effort with the icing there. So, if I make anything out of there, I think it will be a cake. <laughs> um, I do like buying the old, I thought that was older than that. I thought it was 80s, not 90s, it's only 1990. So it's nearly 80s. Um, I do normally pick up 
makey kind of uh, books or magazines that are a bit older because I find them really fun, really fun to look at. Hopefully it will, I've got my, can you see I've got my top on with the, I can't say the word, is it swearing? The nipple, the nipples on the jumper, the, in the, the nipply area. So, um, sorry about that. And you can see it as well. I don't think it's that noticeable, is it? It's a silly place to put the little bottles, isn't it? Anyway, I am waffling on about stuff I don't need to be waffling on about. <laughs> um, thank you so much for joining me and I will have more to show you next time. It might be a sheep. It might be something completely different. I don't know. I plan a little bit, but I don't plan massively. Thinking about making, starting another blanket, but I do like to start things and then I need to finish them, don't I, as well. So I'm not sure about that. Anyway. Um, have a lovely week and I will see you again soon. Take care, everybody. Bye.